Hello, in this lecture we will start dealing with the navigation. So what we will do, first of all, we will obviously create a script tag and then in the script tag we will create one function that will basically make an API sort of call and retrieve a page from the backend. Okay, so let's do the script and let's do it in the bottom of the body, the script. And then let's start with the navigation. Now I will give it a little creative name, the function. And we have a little problem here. Doesn't seem to function quite as properly as I would like it to. So let's do a function now. And let's call it nav2 page 1. Nav2 page 1, just like that open it up and we have our little function up and running almost and here we will make a sort of a raw raw HTTP request we won't be using any jQuery uh, any anything like that we'll just make a raw request so for those of you who don't know how to do that it's a great chance to learn. So, first of all, we need to actually create the request. Is it variable? Call it rec equals new XML HTTP request. And that's it. You kind of construct it in a way. And you have the request. So now we need to fill it. So, in this case, we will just need to open it. Is it rec open? open and let's do get so that's the HTTP method and then the next one is the the route the route that we will take and that is going to be test pages page one now remember we have the controller test pages and then we have the actions according to each page so that's page one page two page three page four that's it that's how you open the request now it's important to remember if you're gonna send a header you first need to open you first open and then you assign the header that's important to remember and now let's do the actual sending let's send re the request so let's do rec and then let's do send and just like that okay so we have send now if you had some form data if you had some data you would put it in here in the send so that would require you to use post request obviously it would be post or put and you would send a body along with that request or rather in the request and you can send lots of things you can send a file you can send a lot of things Okay, so we have the request. Now how we get the response. How we get the response is actually quite simple. There are several ready states. Ready states. So you need to check them on change. There's one, two, three, and four. So let's do rec. Rec on ready state change equals function and double tab it of course. And that's it. We don't need a name, obviously. And we have that. Now, remember, this is a on ready state change. So that's on it. And it doesn't go like that in, in the same line. It doesn't go. It doesn't go like that. It's asynchronous. So it's important to remember that. Now if you pass on a variable from here to here it will work but if you if you want to get a return you have to think of it a little bit more think about it rather okay so we have that I'm not gonna get into these uh, states and what they mean and what we do but I'm just gonna do if and I'm going to look for the state for I'm gonna do rec ready state and that's gonna be for for means you have your data retrieved and the request is over, done 
and you can access the data. Now also what you can do, what you can do is do if rec status, status. So that's going to be 200. We want 200 and we will get something on 200. Okay, so we will get something on 200 and you could check for different errors like that. You could check for, uh, say, 400 and something for probably 401 for the authorization error. And you could do all those checks by accessing rec status status. So first you check for ready state and then if you need to and obviously most of the time you will need to do that uh, you check for the status. Okay so you check for that and now the most interesting part and the main part of this whole thing we need to actually we need to actually get or rather put the page the view into the main container. So in the main container we need to actually call it main container, right? We need to call it so it's the ID equals main container, main container just like that. I'm going to copy it and what I'm going to do, I'm going to do simply document get element by ID just like that. Get element by ID and I'm gonna paste that. And I'm going to do inner HTML. Obviously, you need to do inner HTML. Inner text won't work. You'll just show it as text. We need HTML to display the, e the HTML and to have that view. Okay, so let's do inner HTML equals rec response response, just like that. Uh, response is basically wherever you send with your response the body of the response that's important to remember so we kind of do have the request at least to the first page we have that and it goes to the main container and also you might ask why am not why am I not assigning why am I not assigning the the element to a variable but I would simply say it's gonna take too much effort to do if you don't need to use it in many different places I would not recommend assigning it to a variable it just makes uh, things more confusing and more variables means more confusion okay so just leave it document get element by ID and that's it you're good to go so now it should work, it should work, so let's try to launch it. Let's actually try to launch it and see, see what's, what's going to happen. It should work perfectly. So again, we make the get request to the test pages route, page 1, test pages slash page 1. And you see I don't need to pass on any URL, it's just going to go home. But if you would need to access a public API, if you need to make a call to some different cross-domain API, so you would obviously need to put your domain in there, or rather the full URL, just like that, and you would be able to access those, uh, those public APIs as well. So we should load in a second, and we will see if it works, but I just remembered, I believe I, yes, I did not, I did not do any of that, so I do need the action, the on-click event on button. So it's the on-click, on-click, just like that. Nav, nav to page one, nav to page one, and that's it. Let's try to launch that again. And as you can see, when you put when you put it on the on-click event, it makes makes it all very very readable. Now, of course, if you would have, say, 10 or 20 functions on that simple on-click event, it may be better to actually put it all in the JavaScript. Put the whole thing in the JavaScript and then it would probably, in that case, it would be more readable that way. So, you have to account for circumstances. Always account for circumstances. Now, it should launch in a second. Let's see. It is taking some time in this case but 
we will also, after it's launched and we are sure it's working, we will simply copy this and paste it here and here and here for, for the buttons. And then we also have this open page, so we will we will want to display play the name for the page that is in fact opened. We will display that, and then we will obviously create these uh, functions for each of the other four pages. See if we have it. We have it. Let's see if it works. And it works perfectly. So as you can see, it works perfectly for now at least and in the next lecture we will continue with this and as I mentioned before we will create more JavaScript functions and we will put them into place.